So I've been playing Street Boys. Guys, I finally fucking did it. I actually somehow managed to find a game that is yet to be featured in any YouTube video. I partially expected this to happen during my simple digging adventures at some point, but certainly not on the second video. But uh, yeah, searching Street Boys PS2 will not get you anything except for, well, this video. And even a quick search on Google Image will only get you like three pics and a handful of websites that acknowledge its existence. Hell, even when fucking searching for it with its original Japanese title, I'll only land you a couple of images and some vids on Nico Nico. Making this video almost feels like I'm uncovering something. Some type of lost tomb of gaming that may very well be cursed. Oh god, please help me, I don't want to die. I mean, <laughs> if even Japan barely wants anything to do with this, then... Then... Uh, then it must be good. The story of Street Boys follows the tale of Jin, who according to the back of the box is a tough looking street boy. Sexual. And as such, he has been sent to a discrimination office. I'm not sure what that implies, but it's probably a switch. By the leader of the Hell Black Heaven Gang, who has taken over the entire world. And he hates punks. Luckily, Jin and his butt buddy Genji managed to escape the discrimination office by making the door clip through the floor and then promptly ganking everybody in their near vicinity. Now, by far the biggest crime that this game commits is not having any voice acting whatsoever. There's plenty of cutscenes, sure, but I really would have liked to see lines like Before talking, we need to greet each other in our own way, and in the meantime, let's get on with the fight that was so rudely interrupted. Being read out loud by a voice actor from Planet Fuck. But alas, we have to make do with nothing. Nothing but the game's mishandled scriptures. Anyway, the game is started. And because of that, it's time to kick some ass by way of gameplay that I could only describe as... <laughs> this is a 3D beat-em-up. You know, like Yakuza, Yakuza, and also Yakuza. Only then, on a shoestring budget, <laughs> and you probably already know where this is going. You run around fairly linear levels while doing the same three hit combo over and over. You do set combos with square, do harder knockback moves with triangle, and you're also able to pick up just about everything and everyone to use as a weapon by pressing circle. All levels are placed on this dating sim style persona-ish overworld from which you're also able to access a town-like area with shops. And, well, <laughs> overall, the game is literally a low-budget Yakuza ripoff. And... I honestly kinda love it, almost sort of, maybe. Thing is, is that it has some mild puzzle elements here and there, which are mostly fine I guess and don't really impact the game much at all. But because of the translation being downright awful, the main objectives can sometimes be a bit, uh, obscure, so to say. And the first puzzle is by far the worst in there, as you need to open up cell doors by pushing buttons with no way to know which button opens which door. So when shit started off with the worst part of the entire game, I was all like, yeah, oh yeah, this is bad. But once I got out of prison, I was all like, oh, oh, oh. I actually ended up enjoying this game quite a bit. Though that isn't to say that it doesn't have its fair share of flaws either. Oh fuck no. Much like the overly mentioned Yakuza, the game has a couple of RPG-like features. 
and all of them suck dick. For instance, to be able to buy stuff, you need Zenny, which is dropped by enemies after a good rogering. Picking up said Zenny, though, much like most of everything in this game, is very fucking awkward. In most games, your character will have some kind of gravitational pull when it comes to collectibles. And Jin really doesn't, and as such, you need to be in the exact pixel perfect place to be able to pick shit up. This really takes away the fun you're supposed to get by ranking in big bucks. And it also sucks because you do actually need that shit to be able to buy new weapons. Weapons that you do lose once you get even hit so much as once, and there's plenty of shit laying around each level, so one might really start to wonder why you'd want to buy those weapons in the first place. Though it is a lot more fun to hit people with objects than it is to do with the old fisties. So I can see how such a mechanic could entice the player to play at the best of their abilities. But in any case, everything regarding the game's RPG-like systems is very fucking limited. I mean, there's only a handful of items available for purchase, and only one of each as well. And considering how short the game is, and that you only use two dudes at the same time, it's quite shitty that I already found myself with nothing left to buy halfway through the fucking game. Though that may also be cause I'm just MLG as fuck or some bullshit like that. Hell, I might even be the very best like no one ever was. I mean, for as far as we know, I may very well be the only person outside of Jampange that has ever openly admitted to having played this, so who knows. Something else that also caused my rectum to retreat is the fact that there's absolutely no way for you to turn the fucking camera. You are able to snap it behind you ocarina style, but considering that this is a beat-em-up taking place within a 3D realm, this is quite fucked. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the PS2 controller has a total of two analog sticks. So as to why the right one isn't utilized at all is completely beyond me. Fuck, even the shoulder buttons would have been fine. At least that's better than nothing. As it is now though, the process of hitting dudes is pretty fucking finicky given that you can actually see the fuckers in the first place. Luckily, the game comes with a lock-on button. That makes you move almost intolerably slow, so you're better off not locking on anyway. Ah. <sighs> I don't know, <laughs> this game really could have done with a dodge roll or something. I mean, there is a blocking feature, which does work, only it's decidedly less exciting than dodging and parrying. As now you just kind of stand in place and hold shoulder button whenever an enemy initiates their overly telegraphed attack. To be able to do that in the first place though, you'd need to be able to face your enemies properly, which as established is pretty fucking hard to do. And dying sets you back to the beginning of the stage and most stages last about 20 minutes, so this sucks dick. Especially when most of my deaths were caused by my AI partner dying leaving me to fend for myself, or due to this Weird fucking glitch where staying locked on makes you do a bloody moonwalk. So, uh... Why do I like this game again? Well, this mostly comes from the fact that the game is just surprisingly entertaining to me as a whole. Don't get me wrong, the controls are stiff as nips and really, really awkward. But the sound design and the sheer insanity of it all makes for one cathartic fucking game. As I said before, you have the ability to pick up literally everything and everyone. Whether if it's a bicycle, a traffic cone, or the prison warden, you can swoop them up with ease, and then proceed to hit people, or just toss your desired object and or person into infinity. The game also has some pretty nice contextual design, like the screen violently shaking whenever an enemy dies, or how leveling up after each stage actually noticeably affects your ability to beat up dudes. And these bosses, man, they're pretty fucking awesome. Well, not mechanically, they're mostly just dudes with a bit more health, but fucking... 
<laughs> Look at this guy. It's like they stuffed all of those Hey, a punk Anime trope characters into a single guy And it's the fucking hypest thing ever In the most pathetic and laughable way Just how I like it oh. So, yeah <laughs> This is pretty much what you get when you straight up Take a 2D beat em up and place it in a 3D world Series like Yakuza, Kanka Bunchyo, and the emergence of character action games like God Hand or Devil May Cry added and changed so much that the genre's transition into 3D basically spawned its own completely new thing. But Street Boys stubbornly holds on to its roots, only taking one or two things from Yakuza, though mostly remaining in all of its simplistic glory. The base game is honestly pretty solid, as it does actually have some pretty cool mechanics, believe it or not. Things like having a gauge that once charged allows you to unleash a double crash technique. Or shit like being able to use taunts to actually charge said gauge DMC style. It's all pretty neat stuff, and as I said, it's also pretty satisfying to use. Not sure if I'd really recommend the game to anyone though. But it might be worth an emulate or something if you have a fetish for obscure Japanese bullshit games like I do. <laughs> it's all good though. Shits and giggles, tits and nipples, that sort of thing. Bye!